like fire Shut up in my bones, you're the one The one that I desire You're the only Come on, listen up In your place But when I'm at your zone, it's like fire Shut up in my bones, you're the one You're the one that I desire Hey guys, it's Steve Turpin, lead pastor at Trinity World Outreach, right here in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm standing in the lobby of our children's facility, which is just first class. I love the excellence that we have in our children's ministry. And as I talk to you today, I want to invite you for Sunday. I want you to come and be a part of what God's doing. Make sure you bring your family. Trinity is a big family church, and we love uh, bringing the kids and teaching them and discipling them and, and helping them. Make sure you got your kids in our Trinity Kids ministry. I'm telling you, it will change your life and the kids' life, as well as what's happening in your whole family. Make sure you're at Trinity on Sunday. We can't wait to see you. Service time is 1015. It's 10307 Seatonville Road. Check out our website. Make sure that you're here. We'll see you this Sunday. Have a great day. We can't wait to see you. Part of my testimony um, that I, I guess no, I, it doesn't come up very often is as a kid growing up, my dad was pastor of a church out on the south end of Louisville. Um, I think it was monthly, uh, we would run our buses. We had a huge bus ministry, and we would run buses down to Fort Knox. And, and sometimes I guess they would bring their buses there too. I think maybe that's the way they did it. And at least once a month, uh, we would bring about 500 active duty soldiers um, into our, uh, what do we call, fellowship hall area. And uh, we'd feed them and uh, minister to them. And a whole lot of soldiers got saved uh, right there on, uh, at Beth Haven on, a, I think it was Saturday night, we would do that and uh, bring them in. And it, it was just all inspiring to uh, see uh, dozens of buses pull up in front of the church, and these soldiers get off uh, the bus, and we got to minister to them. And I was just a little kid, so I didn't do any of the ministering. I, I was the one running around creating havoc. But you know what? 50 years later, that sticks in my, in my memory of, of what we did. So anyway, thank you all very much uh, for your service. Uh, you are greatly, uh, uh, greatly to be honored uh, for what you have done and continue to do. Also, let me mention one thing that wasn't said. Tomorrow night, the Fern Creek J-Town prayer uh, for our area here is here at our church. Uh, the times, the schedules have gotten off a little bit, but that is tomorrow night here in the sanctuary. A couple other churches will be joining us, I believe. So come on out for that, 7 o'clock tomorrow night, and uh, make sure you're here for that as well. Amen? All right, are you ready for the word? All right, let's take our Bibles and go to the book of Acts. The book of Acts chapter 2. And as you're turning there or looking it up on your phone, I want to I wanna just talk to you for a few minutes and, and let you know where I'm at and what I'm sensing. As we approach this time of year and we're getting ready to have Thanksgiving and then we've got several things scheduled for you uh, during the whole holiday season and things that are going on. Um, but in the midst of all of that, there's always something in my DNA that is just gets me thinking about the new year, 
uh, it's somewhat prophetic. I begin to sense what God wants in this house, and, and uh, then it correlates over to your house. What I sense could be coming in, into your house. The, the year that we're in, if you, and, and we are, we've been adopted into a Jewish family as believers, amen? So when you look at the Jewish calendar, we're already in the new year of the Jewish calendar, and one of the symbols of that, of, of the Jewish new year that we're in, is it's a year of birthing. It's a year that things are, are going to be born, amen? Things you've been believing for, things you've been standing on. It, it, it's a year of release. Things are going to be released into your life that you've been believing for. Uh, new levels, next levels in marriage and finances. And that's not just year-end hype. That is what I sent in my spirit that, and, and I know you could preach this at any time, but I try to point it out as being significant at right now. There's just times when heaven's open and there's things that just need to be said. This is very much a time to not just uh, be a hearer, but be a doer. Amen? And, and I've shared with you, even as we've been through and we're still in this Try God uh, experience, this Try God movement that we're in, don't, don't take that and miss the open heaven and the anointing that is on that Try God movement right now in this house. Okay? I know you're listening, but give me an amen to... Let me know you're not checking your phone to see what time the kickoff is. That, that it is a time to be a doer of these things and get out of your comfort zone. And I realize some of the things I'm telling you are stre stretching you. They're making you think. Talking about memorial gifts and this gift and this offering and, and getting involved and some of the things I'm going to talk to you about today. I want you to not just hear it, I want you to do it. And, and I know it's different. And some of the things I'm saying to you uh, may sound a little different, but I don't want you to hear the same old thing every week. I don't want you to hear what you heard, uh, what you could hear anywhere, or some, you know, just calm word, just, well, you know, we'll just try to get along. I want you to get what the Word of God is saying for your life and for this moment and this season of your life, amen, and for the life of this church, I want to bring clarity. Everybody say clarity. That's really a word you ought to write down, and you ought to seek clarity in every area of your life. Clarity. Where, where's my marriage headed? Be clear. Where's the relationship headed? Be clear. What do I want? Young, young adults, what, what do you want in life? Be clear. Have, write it down. Get as clear as you can. Put dates to it. Put goals. Set goals. By December 31st, somebody sent me something and said, by December 31st, my car will be paid off. Amen? Get that clear. Get, get that clear. Set, set goals that you're going to get clarity and things that you're going to try God, and you're going to do your part, but then God's going to do his part. Amen? That, that's an important word. Everybody say clarity. So let's read Acts chapter 2. And this is a new level. New things are happening in the church in the New Testament. They are becoming the New Testament church. And if you go back and read this, there's been miracles happening. There's been just stuff going on. I mean, the Holy Ghost is breaking out. I want you to get the, the setting that this is all around. People are coming to know the Lord. It is just a powerful time. And I'm reading this particular passage because I believe that's what's happening in this house. That's why I got to preach it, because you didn't know that this is what was happening. But I'm, I want to get this over into your spirit so that as we try God, we understand what it takes to see the breakthrough and the breakout that God can bring. Amen? So this is the New Testament church. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayer. That's good. 
Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Amen. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all anyone in and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. I want to give you about, I want to give you several keys but I want to focus on a couple of them, and we'll get through this somewhat quickly. The first thing I want you to write down, if you want to see that kind of result where there are people being saved, things being released, people's needs being met, excitement happening, let me give you these keys. The first key is this. Number one, commitment is a key to seeing this kind of breakthrough. Go back to verse 42, if we could. They continued steadfastly. They continued steadfastly. They were committed. One translation said they were committed to the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. It says uh, in the apostles' word and fellowship, they were committed. Everybody say committed. It's been said that you don't get what you want in life. You get what you're committed to. Some of you want to lose 20 pounds. You're just not committed to it. So you don't get what you want. You get what you're committed to. Some of you want to have a higher income. You're just not committed to do what it takes to go and get that. You're, you say you want a better relationship with your spouse, but when you look, if you laid out, well, what are you doing to make it better? It's not a very long list. You're not really committed. To that. You want it, you say you want it, but there's no fruit that's behind, behind it. It says they were committed to the word and prayer. What do I need to be committed to to see the kind of breakthrough I want, Pastor? The word and prayer. They gave themselves steadfastly to word and prayer. They gave themselves, they were committed to the fellowship. A lot of people don't like fellowship because they don't like the fellows in their ship. <laughs> Am I right? But not here. Everybody say, not here. here. So, but being committed, committed to the things of God, committed to the things that can make a difference. This is where you got to be a doer. Is it out of your comfort zone to be committed? Yeah, probably. Is it out of your comfort zone? To come, we've got prayer tomorrow night that is kind of an area-wide prayer, but on December the 1st, we're going to have prayer for our own church and, and transforming prayer that'll happen. I, is that out of your comfort zone? Maybe. Maybe you've never been to a prayer meeting. But there are things that are going on in your life that you need to say, you know what, I got to do what I haven't done in the past. One of my favorite sayings is, if you always do what you've always done, You'll always get what you always got. I guess I've said that a few times here. Right? The definition of insanity is to do the same things over and over again and expect a different result. So you got to be committed to change. You got to be committed to the word and to prayer. Right today, right now, over in our children's uh, church, in our kids' church today, our prayer leaders, uh, Joan and Daniel, are teaching our little ones how to pray. Amen. Isn't that good? They need to pray. They, you teach a little six-year-old how to pray, you can't take prayer out of school. Well, they legislated, yeah, I know, but a six-year-old going to first grade knows how to pray. So you didn't take prayer out of school because you didn't take the sixth grade, six-year-old out of school. I'm just saying, right? They're the prayer. Amen? Second thing, and I'm, I, I'm getting this into you. I'm, I'm intentionally not just trying to preach this to you. I'm trying to put the word in you today. I want you to get this. A second thing that happened is 
that there is excitement and expectation for the vision that is happening. In verse 43, it says, then fear came upon every soul. There's a translation, and I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get it to them. One translation says that all, that the awe came upon every believer. The awe came upon every believer. You know what we've lost sometimes? The awe. Not awe. The awe. The expectation. The, the, the reverence for the things of God. The reverence to go. You see, people come in, and, and church has become in so many ways a show. It, it's become, what can you do for me? Dude, is, 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 the, is the worship good enough to get me to lift my hands? If that's your attitude, it probably won't ever be good enough. Is the preaching good enough to get me to come back? It, we've lost the awe. We've lost the anticipation for the vision. We need to be like little children. A lot of times people get to looking around at everything that's wrong. Well, this isn't right. It's kind of cold, and it's this, and it's that, and I wish this was different. And, and, we, and, and we get so involved in that that we lose the presence that's coming in the house. We lose the, the anticipation of, oh, my God, I was in his presence today. I can't wait to get there because the presence of the Lord is going to be in the house. I know he's in my house, and I get that, but I get to come, the awe of being with other believers and the fellowship, and I get to lift my hands. There's places today that they don't have that privilege. They can't get to a church. They can't do it without being persecuted. But here, the awe I get to come to church, not do we have to go? I don't have to go. I get to go. I, I get to be in his house. I, I get to show up. I get to hear Michael beat those drums. I get to, to see the buzz from New York. I get to see all this stuff. I don't have to. I get to. It's not a persecution. It's not a, it's not a punishment. It is a joy. It's an awe. I, somebody's going to get blessed. If, if it's not me, my neighbor, somebody I brought, I invited somebody. There's an awe. There's a reverence. I get to be in the house. I get to be in the house. It's a privilege. It's an honor. It's, it's not my right. It's, it's, a, it's awe. It's like, oh my God, look where I'm at. Look at where I'm at, in the house of God. I'm, I'm in God's house today. I, I'm with my other believers. I, 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 I'm believing God for some things. There's an expectation that we can't lose if we want to see 2019 be the greatest year we've ever had. I come expecting. I come ready to worship. I come ready to say amen. You can't keep me from saying amen. amen. I'm going to say it. I got a hallelujah. I got... That's what John Gray says. Uh, it's a whole lot of hallelujah, amen, that I can't help it. I, I cheer. I jump up and down. I, 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 like, I like praising God. I, I like saying amen. I, you know, I, I, I was, I, if, you're a, if, if you're a sports fan, I know there hadn't been a lot to cheer about in the last eight or ten days for a lot of us, but even when there wasn't a lot to cheer about, when they did do something right, you know what? Yeah, yeah, woo, yeah, that's good. Amen? Sometimes I think we just need to give God a big hallelujah. Yeah, a big God did it. God did it. God did it. Yeah. Yeah, it's been, it's been a tough week. It's been hard. But look what God did. I'm in the house. I'm back in the house today. Amen? There's an awe and an expectation and excitement. We can't just look around and see everything that's wrong, we got to say, God, look what you're doing that's right. Third thing is we got to believe for the supernatural. Look at verse 43 again. Fear came upon every soul, or awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs. There is, I, I'm in awe, because of the many wonders and signs that were done through the apostles. There were signs and wonders going on. I come expecting that when people are being prayed for, that I, I'm in awe that somebody came up here with a burden 
And 45 seconds later, 90 seconds later, they got prayed for, and they turned around, and the burden got left. I'm in awe that life could change. In, in 90 seconds, you could go from being an addict, from, from you just smoked some reefer last night, you just stuck a needle in your arm, you just snorted something, but in 90 seconds of humbling coming before God, that's the God we serve. That's the supernatural. That God can do it. God can do it. God can do what we can't do. God can do what we can't do. We can do what we can do. I can pray, and I can give, and I can sow a memorial gift, and I can do this. And I, But at the end, God is the one that sets the captive free. God is the one. That makes a way where there doesn't seem to be a way. If we could have, we would have, and we should have. But we can't, but he can. That doesn't keep us from doing our part. I come expecting signs and wonders. Yeah, everyone around was in awe. All those wonders and signs done through the apostle. I had somebody tell me this week about a family situation. It's not about... Money's just one tool. Money's just a tool. It's just one aspect. Somebody told me about a family situation this week, and they said, we've done our part, but now we're going to try God, and God's going to do his part. We do what we can do, and then God does what he, only he can do. Because there's something you can't change. You can't, you can't heal yourself. You can't uh, make some things happen that you want. You can't do, but you can do your part. And then say, God, you do your part. Amen? Number four, when this happens, a giving spirit is released. It says in verse 44 and 45, now all who believed were together and they had all things in common. And they sold possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. They, if somebody had a need, somebody sold something to go make sure that need got met. That, that's crazy, church. Amen? They were going to make sure that the need got met. I'm not about to let you go hungry. If it means I got to go sell the car, I got to sell my couch, I got to sell my dog. Well, I don't know about my dog, but uh, <laughs> the <laughs> sell my shoes, sell, sell my suit, sell whatever I got to sell to make sure not that I get met, that you get met. You see, there's a shift. There's, oh, my God, I never thought about it like that. Thought about me okay, making sure me and my four get my needs met. Oh, wait a minute, my needs are met. So I'm not just blessed. I'm blessed to be a blessing. I don't ever preach that you get blessed to go consume it on your loss. Never have, never will. You get it so that you, you, that you can go be a blessing to somebody else. I, think, I know I've told this story. I was at a Christian uh, conference, big time preacher preaching and, you know, believed in prosperity. I, walked, I was walking out the door. And the, the meeting was kind of over, and there's a group of people gathered around. There must have been 10 people in this prayer circle. And they're praying. And I mean, they're like, oh, God, oh, God. Oh, wow, man, something's going on. So I got somebody's attention. I said, hey, what are we praying for? They said, the woman over there needs a new refrigerator, and we're praying God get her one. I said, well, there's about 12 of us here. Why don't we take up an offering and go get her one right now? We don't need to pray about that. We just need to pull a hundred out. I said, here's my hundred. Now the rest of you guys give a hundred. They looked at me like I'd lost my mind. I said, man, y'all praying for 30 minutes to go get a $700 refrigerator. Just give her the money. Amen. See, shift. I know some of you are getting uncomfortable like, I'm, but I don't know about that, you know. A giving spirit. We're going to take an offering for our, the, the, to be able to open up our life center to the community. Starts this week. We've got a bunch of kids going to be on campus this week at night uh, using our facility. It's starting. It's, we're getting it going. It, it's happening. We're getting ready to buy some of those things. But a giving spirit, not seeing how little I can give, how much can I give? Number five, this is a, a big part. Number five. We start getting connected by what I'm releasing today called leading small. 
And I'll explain what I mean. Verse 46 says, They continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. They ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. We're going to go back in 2019 to the original way that we started with our, with our life groups and what we're going to start calling small groups. There's going to be two different things go on at Trinity in 2019. One is our Bible studies that we've been doing, men's and women's, those will continue. At the same time, we're going to be calling on some of you all to lead small groups, men's groups, women's groups, uh, young adult groups, uh, seniors groups, different ones uh, by age, by gender sometimes, different uh, formats, different things, and each one will go, but like the small groups will go all year long. And what's going to happen is that we begin to make connection and relationship in these small groups. Let me read to you, and this is in my heart. This is how we started years ago, probably eight years ago at least. And and it it doesn't, listen, life happens in small groups. The the greatest, and this is true, I read this this week, what we do for a few will always have more potential than what we can do for many. The truth is, I can probably personally help you more if if we meet one-on-one than if this whole group. I mean, you can get it today, but the potential is when you've got no more than about six to eight people in your group. It might be a married group. We've got a married group going on right now that is just changing lives. And things are happening but it's because it's that intimacy that's in the group. It says, to follow the heart of God, we must live in community. There are dozens of commands in scriptures that we cannot be obedient to to outside the context of community. They are the one another command. Love one another, serve one another, honor one another, forgive one another, accept one another, bear one another's burden. Jesus said, I, a new command I give you, love one another. And as I loved you, you must love one another. And they will know you are my disciples because you love one another. Jesus made it clear that our love for one another would send a clear and compelling message to the world. It's not our sermons, our books, our worship songs. Instead, it is the way that we are connected to one another. It is the way that we do life together. Jesus prayed that his followers would be one. Once again, community would be the catalyst for spreading his message and changing the world. Small groups would be the engine for discipleship, house to house, house to house. Small groups would be the fuel for spreading the message of Jesus. Small groups would be the crucible for building and growing authentic faith. His last command cannot be our least concern. We're going to have the opportunity in 2019 to lead small groups, to lead small, different groups, different, different leaders, different ones, people getting the opportunity to use their gifts and what they're able to do. And it'll take on different forms. But I'm telling you, this is how, this is how life gets connected. Because you might get to tell me about a need you have I mean, you could any time. I, I get that. But you might get a, a minute or two here at the altar. But when you're doing life with about six or eight other people and you all got something going on you need prayed for, I mean, I can pray. But what happens when you got six or eight people joining hands around a Starbucks table or a kitchen table? Those small groups won't meet here. They're house to house. They're going to meet in other places. Going to get connected. Not just to hang out. Hang out is a good part. Go to dinner together, do all that. But when there's a need, I can remember standing in our basement of our first house, and we had a small group. And one of the young ladies there, young married lady, we were all young marrieds just about at the time. And 
We're joining hands. And she looked at us and she said, I got diagnosed with breast cancer this week. You remember this? And, and we just, as a group, there's about eight of us, maybe 10. And we began to pray for her and say, Lord, we ask you to do something. And she, she wasn't doing the treatments and all of that. She went back to her doctor. And I think the first report was a little better and then a little better. And we kept standing in agreement week after week after week. And she finally was able to come back and say, I got a good report. There's no sign of cancer anymore. You see, that's, that can happen. I get it. That can happen in a lot of settings, but it happened in the small group. We'll be talking more about leading small this coming year and how powerful that's going to be as we learn together and help each other. When we do that, the sixth thing is, is praise and favor becomes a way of life. Verse 47 says, praising God. You want to praise God? Praise God. When you get that report back, doctor said, just what we've been praying for has happened. There's no cancer. You're going to praise God and have favor with all the people. You're going to have favor with all the people in a small group. It can be a Bible study too. It can be small group. It can be Sunday morning, but we're going to have more connection. And the Lord added to the church daily. That's the seventh thing. Growth is a result. Spiritual and numerical. The Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. The Lord's going to add daily. Because not only, sometimes it's hard to bring a friend to church. Shouldn't be, but sometimes it is. Because as a charismatic church, you always pray that's the Sunday that we don't do the march around the sanctuary. (laughs) I'm right. I know I'm right. Been there. Oh, Lord, they're going to do the march this Sunday. I can just feel it. But you know what? You all have friends that probably aren't in church, but they come to a small group. They come to a Bible study. They come to something else that's going on. and we begin to reach them right there. We begin to help. We, we, we have a hurting city. We have hurting communities. You work with people that are hurting. I believe, I, I just can't get over this. The church is the answer. Not a church, not walls and buildings, but believers. <sighs> what happened in California What's happened in Louisville, what's happened in Pittsburgh in the last two weeks. You can't get enough pills to solve that. You can't get you you can't get enough counseling sessions to fix that. There is one thing. Nobody, the world doesn't believe this, but this is why we're different. One thing, one thing, and that is the love of Jesus Christ is the only thing that changes a man or woman's heart. It's the only thing that changes a man or woman's heart. I can't, it's his love that never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. And the church is the only one that can, can help that. We're, we're the light, and bad stuff still happens, and I get that, and we got to do everything we can to do the best, but man, where would you be if it wasn't for the love of God? Where would you be? Where would you be if it wasn't for his love? Where, I mean, you could be a mess. You got delivered from some crazy stuff, right? We got an opportunity. We're going to keep casting vision for 2019. There's a lot on the plate for 2019. But I'm telling you, it's going to help our city. It's going to help this church. I've got more passion than I've had in a long time. I told you last week, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. I can't wait. I can't. I want it to get here now. I want to, I want to preach it all right now. I want to tell you all about it right now. I want to get it all in place right now. Let's go, go, go. It's like, oh my God, I got, I got. 50 days before 2019 gets here, and we can do some of this. But at least I can talk about it. I can start telling you how good it's going to be. 
and it's going to help children and teenagers and young adults. It's going to help us as a community. This athletic thing we've got going is going to help us. It, it, it is a huge thing that we've got an opportunity to do that we haven't had before for 20 years. 20 years I've tried to do this. 20 years. I, I, we've, and we've, we've done little things. I'm not dissing it. We, we, uh, we used to open it up for our seniors to come there early and walk. Remember, we donated all the weight equipment, had a little weight room over there, found out it was about 14 degrees in that room, and nobody wanted to come lift weight in 14 degrees because we found out there's no heat in that room. So we put heaters in there and did other things, and, and we've done some things. But we stand at the precipice of being able to have our greatest days ever. I know that. I know we've had good days. We've had great days. But we stand at the opportunity to open up our facility to the community like never before. We got people calling us. They want to use it. They want to get here. They want to get on campus. And we get them here on campus. We get an opportunity to minister to them. These will be kids and young people and young adults and their parents that we won't get to reach any other way. But God's opening this door. We got to get some things in place. I, I don't have the money set aside to do everything we need to do. Last week, we took those pledge cards. I don't know if every, I know everybody didn't turn them in, but if you haven't turned in a card, or if you can go ahead and turn your gift in, that I, I'm believing for 10 people that can do $2,000, that I think we have three that have already turned it in and committed to that. Um, maybe you can do that. This, we need about $30,000 to do everything we need to do over there and buy the bleachers and the scoreboards. And this is part of the vision of this house. We have a $2 million building over there, debt-free. We don't owe any money on it. We've done so much construction over there and renovated so much of it. Now we got to do the gym. Now we've got to get that done. we got leagues calling us saying, as soon as you get your scoreboards and bleachers, we want to we wanna get on board with you. We want to bring kids over there. And we got to get this done. And um, we had about $12,000 pledged last week. Um, so we need some more. We need some more. Lisa and I have done our part. We have to. We'll do more. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll find a way. We'll sell something. We'll go do something to say, you know what? Let's get this thing done and let's make a way. Amen. If you haven't filled this out, if you need one of these, anybody need one of these? Uh, right here. All right. They're going to get them for you. Yeah, go ahead and hand some of those out. Raise your hand if you need a pledge card. They've got some over here. Pray about it. We're going to take an offering in a moment for this. This is a real opportunity for us as a church. God's going to bring the money to your house. I believe that. As Pastor Winston always says, if God brings it to you, will you bring it to the house? And that's a question that you've got to answer. Make check payable to TWOC. You can give by debit card. I believe you can also, don't text to give yet. It, I don't know if it's set up or not, and I don't see anybody that can answer that question for me at the moment. But you can do that. I'll let you know that next week. But do it by debit card. Do it um, uh, online. Write a check, cash, whatever you want to do. If you want to bring briefcases full of money tomorrow, that's okay. Yeah. Don't say God can't do it. Amen. The prophet said, go get as many jars of oil as you can. And it, the oil's not going to stop flowing until you run out of jars. Go ahead and play. Father, we worship you. Lord, when there is, when there is the presence of the Lord when there are new levels and next levels. Father, a giving spirit is released. And Lord, as people give this offering today, as they bring this special offering, Lord, it is a memorial gift. It is a gift that we can give and say, Lord, I'm believing for this to happen. I'm believing for... Uh, an increase in the finances of my house. I'm believing for uh, a new job. I'm believing for a promotion. I'm believing for something. You, you attach whatever it is, a family member to get saved or whatever, something that just encourages your faith. 
Father, stretch us in this time. We don't want to do what's comfortable. We don't want to do, you know, a few dollars when we could do a whole lot. But Lord, if we don't have a whole lot, Lord, we'll do what we can. Every person will do what they can. And Father, together that will bring a great, great harvest to this house. So Lord, I thank you for it. We give you the praise, the honor, the glory. In Jesus' name, we call this need met and the community coming to this campus. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen.